Hi everyone, it's Cindy. I am here with kind of an ongoing type project that I'm going to be starting and working through um, every now and then. You'll see me pull it out as I'm working on other things. So I think I spoke about this book, Sally Go Round the Sun by Edith Falk. Um, so this book was a huge... Um, inspiration to me when I was a kid. I used to check it out from my local library all the time. Um, what really appealed to me, I think, wasn't really the music that's inside of it or the poetry, but actually the illustrations. I love them. I think it is so fun and colorful. Um, the music is quite like old, kind of. So, so is the... Um, like the verse, a lot of it's quite old and, and kind of strange by today's, you know, um, by today's judgment, I guess. So what I want to do with it is make it into like a creativity record book, sort of, um, so that I can store what I'm like a little bit of what I'm working on. Like right now I'm working on a series of fairy journals. So I've pulled together some things here that I've used in the fairy journals that were scraps um, that I won't be using. But I'd like to kind of remember that I did all of that work and I'm thinking of doing it in a certain format. And that format is stamps. Um, making my own little stamps in different ways out of excess materials or little bits of materials from each of my projects. Now, the first thing that I really would like to do though is I want to use the cover, um, the actual outside cover, this. So, um, cause it's a lot more interesting than, than just this. That's cute and all, but it's not as cool as that rainbow cover. So I do think I'm going to need a larger spine cause this is just a tiny little spine. And I'm thinking I probably want this to be about a two inch spine. Now the pages that will go inside of it are actually going to just be these pages, but we're going to need a lot more space to house them because I'll be gluing things to them. If I just started, you know, sticking stuff on here, then I wouldn't have enough space. Um, so what I would like to do is to just, um, you know, as I go through, I'm going to like probably cover this up with some kind of nice paper. Um, and then I'll stick my stamps on here and I'll write a little entry about like my fairy journals and what I learned or whatever. Um, but I'll try to keep as much of the illustrations that I love in the book. So I'm going to get started doing this today just by removing, um, just bending this back and pulling the book right out of its spine. That was a little hard to do because this book is so <laughs> special to me. Um, but I have, um, I actually have multiple copies of it that sit in my library. So the first thing I'll do is I will take away this. Um, and this is the good stuff. I always keep these because they're really great for collage. But you don't want all this stuff in the inside here. Whatever will come off, just pull it up. You don't need to like obsessively go around, but whatever you can get off is great. Um, I do tend to leave like a little bit to just guide me when I'm putting in new end papers, but if there's stuff that's really loose, I will take it up because I don't want it there. There we go. Okay, so now we've prepped that. Now, let me just show you something here. So see, I keep this box and I put all these in here because they're great for later for collaging. So I'll set the pages aside. Um, these are thankfully, they're in signatures that have been um, stitched together, but they're also, they have a bit of glue, but that's okay. They're going to come in later on in the project. For now though, I need to get a knife and my knife has gone missing. I think I might have accidentally thrown it in the recycle bin so I'm gonna have to do a little digging and find out what's going on. Um, but I do have this knife now. I'm not I'm not particularly happy with this knife. It's kind of weird because the blade doesn't stay in that well so um, now I'm just gonna cut very very sharp thankfully. Ok, 
Okay. Now I still want to use this too. So now where is my knife guard? You know, that clear plastic, super small and important thing. Okay, put that back on, not sideways or backwards, I mean. See this knife, it's very dangerous. This is a Fisker's knife. I would have expected it to be kind of a better, <laughs> a better design. Um, put it over here, okay. So for now, I'm just going to set the spine aside because what I want to work on is um, getting the this touch. But first, you know what, let me grab my stamp punch so I can show you kind of what my concept will be. Okay, so this is a Stampin' Up um, rectangular stamp punch. That's what I'm going to use for this one. I do have a few different stamp punches, but for this one, I want to use this. So let's see if I can get the dragonfly. So this will be one, one stamp. And then I have my fairy here. I'm going to cut a little bit of the bottom off. Fairy. And I'll try to get these dandelions to these are just you know bits and bobs a little collection of things that I used making the fairy journals and kind of like how I want to remember what I was working on at this time some of the coloring book pages this is from a nature book um, I used it for many different flips and things in the book. So I'll just get some of this nice leaf detail. And then I did use Amity Bloom um, in the, the way that I did the signature. So I'll take a little bit of that, or the spine rather, not the signature. And this is vintage wallpaper, which I used And then I'll take one of these butterflies because I used these butterfly wings many times in the process of creating this um, set of journals. So I'll grab maybe hmm, trying to find what would be nice. This, this, maybe this. So now we've got, you know, a set of stamps that are like samples. They represent the work that we did on these journals. And I think they're going to be very fun, you know, to have displayed in a little, a little set to just say like, this is what I worked on with these fairy journals. This was some of the details that went into them. Um, so now let's just set those aside in my little bowl back here and you know maybe I could also include something like this with them so that it's like a you know I it's from one of the books that I used so now I will separate these with my ruler maybe I'll use a ruler to just okay and I want to keep the, the spine piece too. So set that scrap aside with the other spine. Um, and then we'll take off these. And then I know I have this tear here, but... Um, I think I'll just pull it off this way. Oh, that's really hard to work. Okay. And then at the bottom, I'll take off the words. Okay, so this is what I'm going to want on the cover of my book here. 
I want to cover that um, image that's on there, I think, because I'm not going to be able to fit the whole thing, so I might as well just cover it. Now you can tell this is a glossy, very glossy, right? So I'm going to Mod Podge it with some, uh, or some matte medium maybe. I may not Mod Podge it, I may use matte medium, we'll see. Um, but first I'm just gonna get it glued on. So I'm just gonna use Art Glitter Glue. going to um, smoosh this down a little bit. It doesn't need to be like super smooshed, just a bit. So we don't have the rippling. But with art glitter glue, you really have to kind of hurry up because it will dry very quickly. Okay. And you could also um, put this on a piece of scrap of paper if you wanted to, to give it a little bit more height to stand up. And I just don't think it needs it. It's fine. Okay. That side is done. So we'll set that underneath. Now, the top side, we want to do the same thing, basically. Take off this beautiful picture of Edith. Oops, that was a little bit messy. So let's just... Even that up. And from the bottom, it's still a little wide and a little big. So let's try more here. And then a little from the sky. And that should be good. Yes, okay. I'm just going to lay it on there, kind of like, you know, a Polaroid, not directly in the middle, but like a bit of a Polaroid, sort of how it sits with a little bit of at the base. Okay. We'll set Edith aside here. I'll wipe off that old card. Um, now, I think what I would like to do next is a little bit of, um, I want to do maybe some black ink around the edge. So I will get my black soot. I just think that that will give it a nice framing effect on the cover. Yeah, a little bit. It doesn't um, go on as well as it does on paper on these kind of books, but that's okay.
and I'll need to give this a little bit of drying time before I seal it because otherwise it will move around or just get completely removed. Okay, we'll do the back as well. Don't actually need to move it back and forth. We can just neatly line it this way. It's actually much better. Okay, I actually see if this looks better if I do this. Oh, it definitely does. <laughs> Oh, it's the little things that you don't even think about. Okay. A little bit on the edge there, that's okay though. Not a big deal. Okay. So now I'm going to just let these set aside and dry. And then I'm going to build the spine for this. Okay, so we still have the original spine, which is great. It's a good guide um, for the size of the spine. And I'll see if I have here, I think I have some nice thick card right here. This is gonna be an avalanche. Because I just have like a lot of stuff that's hanging around right here in my scraps because I need to use them for some projects. So hopefully this is tall enough. And it is like literally perfect. Okay, who ordered the perfection and sent it my way? Thank you for that. <laughs> so weird. Okay. So I need to cut this out. And I'm actually going to do it, I think, with, um, I don't know, I'll try with this. My guillotine does not love big fat things. And I don't know where my fist cutter is right now. Well, I do. It's under my desk. I just don't feel like getting it because I'm being lazy. I'm going to go with like a two and a half, two and a half inch spine, I think. Okay, that wasn't as painful as it could have been. So I'll stick this back. All right, now I need to glue these back together because they did get separated. Um, they were like... They're from one of those floral, like, photo album frame books. And, um, they were only glued on the edges, so they lost, they lost their glue. This one goes on this edge, I think. Yeah, let's put it back together the way it was. Okay. going to be a little bit slip slidey for a moment here. I'm just going to let that dry. I think I probably want to curve this spine because that would be nice. I could even put ribbing on it which would also be nice but we'll see. Well I guess if we're going to do ribbing I could do that now before I put fabric over it and then put the whole thing on the curve. Okay, let me just put the needle and the glue here. There. All right, so let's just use this same thing that I've been using, but maybe only half of it. Um, this is just cleaner, let's see. That's a cleaner edge already. So we want two and a half. Set that aside. I'll still use it for stuff. Now I want to cut these one inch. Um, and I think I want maybe five of these at one inch. One. Four. Just kidding. Just making sure that you're still paying attention. <laughs> okay, five. There we go. That 
out of the way. Now, <clears throat> so I think we'll go with one, two, three, five. Yeah, that would be good. All right, let's glue those bad boys on. So these are just like spine ledges like you see in old books. This is a fake way of making them basically, or not a fake way, but like a way of making them. You know, it's not actually an old book, I guess is what I'm getting at. Although the book that I'm using to make this book is pretty old. It is a 70s book, I believe, Edith's book. Not as old as what you would find these old ridged bits on though. So this is just going to need to dry. So let's set that aside to just dry with its friends over here, the cover. So all those can dry up. Now what I will do, um, so a book like this, let me think, actually, let me grab it for one more minute. So signatures, probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's not straight and I know that, I'm just estimating. So I think I'll do seven signatures. Um, and we're gonna make the signatures actually from this book. So I need to just work on taking the signatures that are existing in this book apart. Um, which is a pretty easy thing to do usually. I'm just gonna look for where they, they disconnect, see? So there's the strings. And just kind of pull any glue away that you can. One. My fingers are covered in glue, so please just ignore that. <laughs> Three. Sometimes it can be a little hard to tell. I think this one's part of this. Oh. Yeah, it is. Okay. Sometimes there are a few pages that get like glued in slightly differently in books to kind of glue it together in a certain way. This is one. That, no, that's two. Here we go. Yeah, that stays with that. And yeah, this is the spot where it feels kind of like a it's been glued in like a fly page in the middle, but it's not. It's like just a weird way they they just kind of glue the very edgy edge of the page sometimes to just. Give it some stability in the center. I, I see that sometimes, usually with these larger books. 
Um, okay, so what do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five. This book has nine signatures, so I'm going to use the excess pages um, back in the other signatures. Because this book, it's just going to be basically like a glue book. Um, I'm not going to be bulking it up a ton with stuff. It's just going to be flat paper glued onto flat paper, not layered up in any way really. Just one kind of layer. So I'd like to try to use up all the pages. And I may actually even paint instead of glue paper down to do my journal on or my sticking down on. So to cover up like the excess stuff that I don't want. Okay. This. And I think I'll make some kind of a title page on this brown piece. And this will be my first signature right here. So one, two, three, four, five. Actually, these don't have to be in order. One. Um, I'll say two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven signatures, and I want the brown one at the front. Now we will start to take these pages apart. Four pages, I think, per signature. One, two, three, and four. Yes, that's great. So now, do I want to keep these? These kind of more boring ones. I don't think so. I don't think I want that one. The rest I'll keep though. Just I'll get rid of the one that doesn't have any illustration at all. These ones do, so yeah. All the rest are good. It's just that one that was a boring page. Okay. So now let's start putting these. So we have seven signatures, and there are how many? One, two, three, four. Eight, nine, ten, eleven extra pages. Okay, so let's just put them inside the centers of the signatures. One, two, three, four. We know these have four signatures, so we can plunk that in here. Um, we'll do two because we know there's going to be two, right? So. And I can put two in this one as well. And that will take care of. Oh, is this a weird one? Yeah, this is the end with the fly paper. Um that's okay. I'm just gonna use that one in there. Okay. One and two. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, seven, eight more. Okay, so we can do two in this one. One, two, three, four. Okay. One, two, three, four. Signatures wise, we got about three. 
and we've got one, two, three, four pages. So yeah, this one I'll put in two. Actually, maybe I'll just do one so that we balance it. Okay, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two. And then one, two, three, four. And put this last one in. Okay, so there's all our pages put together in seven signatures. Um, that will go into my book. Pretty happy that that went so smoothly. So I gotta think about how I wanna decorate this um, front page. I'll probably do something kinda cute with like maybe, you know what I have left over is, um, I've been making like fairy journals for so long that I actually have a ton of scraps of cool stuff and I have this one particular one this one that might be neat to add like on the side like if I cut that out that would be a nice color to go together um, and then I'll just sort of think about how I want to talk about what this book is and just maybe call it something like um, creativity record or something and I'll put a label with the date yeah so let's just maybe cut this out do these little bits that we can right now. I'm excited to work in this book and to do something a little bit different. It's just going to cut around these flowers. And I don't think I'm going to put any, I don't know if I want to put any fabric or anything on as tabs or ruffles. Okay. And see like that would be neat but I do think it needs to be inked for sure. Maybe I will go to the computer and make some kind of a nice title in text for this. Or I could, so I could stamp it with letters too. That would be nice. Stamp it on some coffee dyed paper. Or on a doily maybe. trying to just see which way I would like this the most. I think I do like it this way and then probably I'll overlay something here. I think I just need to shorten it a little bit right where these two leaves are. Okay, let's glue that down and it will give us a modest start here. Maybe you want to make a creativity 
sampler or record or whatever you want to call it to make one with me. It could be fun. You saw how easy it was to take apart a big book. So if you have a book that you like, like this music book that I love, um, there's another one too called like the Fireside Book of Songs that also has these kind of cool illustrations, like 70s, but I could also see um, using um, a binder, like those old Better Homes and Gardens type binders would be really nice because you could easily take the pages inside and out and you wouldn't have to do, you know, the creating of signatures. It would simplify it a little bit. Um, yeah. So something to think about. You could do a little one too. You don't have to do such a big one like I am. Um, okay, I'm going to take a break and wash my hands and um, do something else maybe for a little bit. I think that what I do want to do, I'm going to try to strip this um, spine off of here. Maybe I'll put that in, on, the, on this page on the inside here. I can get it off relatively unscathed. And I did. Good, good. So I'm just going to cut around the title. Just get the yucky off the back, the old glue. See that old glue? I'm just gonna get that off. And I think I might put that at the bottom here. Or possibly at the top. At the top might be nice, because it is like a title page. And I know it's not related to what the journal is, but it is the book that the journal is going to be made with. So. Lou wants to be jammed now, of course. Okay. You just uh, go under it a little more on the edge here. Okay. Okay, so um, I think that will be the video for today. Um, next stage, you will see me either with this done or I might do one more video. Um, we'll see. <laughs> We'll see. Let me know if you're interested in seeing more of this or not, and I will figure it out. So thank you so much. Have a great day. We'll talk again very soon. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do. I do all sorts of fun stuff here, and usually I don't have such a weird voice, but today I do. <laughs> so bye for now.